here from Rainbow Balloons and welcome back. I know it's been some time since my last tutorial, however, I hope you're here feeling refreshed and ready to go for the latest tutorial. Now, before I do get into it, I just wanted to share with you some exciting news which I actually mentioned a few videos back and you're probably like, well hey there Sonia, I don't think you told me what that exciting news was, like what is up with that? Well, let me tell you now, I'm excited to say that in late August, I'm going to be running a training day thanks to Jazz Trading over in Queensland. So being a Territorian girl, that's really exciting to me and I'm really looking forward to that experience and the creations that might come out of that workshop um, that is run, like I said, in conjunction with Zoe of Jazz Trading. If you're not familiar with her work, make sure you do have a look because this beautiful balloons, florals, and it's really such a visual treat. So, more details as they come, I'd love to share with you. But for now, let's get into today's balloon twisting tutorial. Now, that is on a, a design I've been thinking I wanted to show you for a little while, and hey, look, it's great news, I'm finally doing that. So, <laughs> it is this butterfly. Not only is it this butterfly, it's this butterfly. And with a little creative imagination, it's this butterfly. <laughs> Basically, the design I want to show you today, I don't want you to be thinking that there's only one way to do it. You've got a couple of options. And if you watch all the way to the end, I'm going to give you one more variation, which hopefully you haven't thought of, because I think it's a lot of fun. And it's uh, something that incorporates a little bit of movement into your balloon sculptures. So let's get started first on the butterfly and we'll get to that soon. Okay, so uh, for this one, I am going to recommend that you take two 160s and, and sorry, two 260s. Now, with the ones that I showed you here for the butterfly wand, they uh, do vary in sizes as well, you might have noticed. But uh, the one I'm going to show you is with uh, two 160s and two 260s. Getting started, uh, I've chosen these two colors. So I'm going to go ahead to inflate my first color, which I might do as the pink, as I often so do. <laughs> and uh, what I'm going to do is inflate it with approximately uh, 10 to 15 centimeters uninflated. I like to pinch the end of the balloon to help uh, guide me where I need to stop inserting air in. Okay, so tying that off, and we're starting with the upper butterfly wings. So the first balloon I'm going to twist is approximately 20 centimeters long. Now, um, if you're following along in inches, that is approximately <laughs> eight inches, my apologies. Okay, now for the next chain of bubbles, what I like to do is about two or three twists and then one or two more for good measure to help ensure that they're not going to come undone. So this first bubble is approximately two and a half centimeters or an inch long. As we do the next bubble in the chain, we're going to make it slightly smaller than the first. Okay. Again, we are going to downsize this next bubble. Slightly smaller, you can see the size changing its um, length as we go. This next bubble is almost considered a perfect sphere. And finally, we're going to do a smaller bubble in that series of concentric bubbles are uh, getting smaller. Next, I'm going to twist off a bubble, which is approximately one third the length of the first one we did. We're going to get that knot around there, bring it through and lock it in place. So hopefully that's going nowhere. So now we're going to repeat this chain of bubbles as accurately and closely as possible that we did with the first. I often start with the sizing of the last bubble uh, as my first one here. And then, as discussed, you're going to repeat that chain as closely as possible. A little small bubble. Followed by one that's just about perfectly round. 
getting bigger. And finally, we're going to match the size of that first bubble. And we are looking at this at this point. Now we've done most of the upper wing, we're going to work on the lower wings. What we're gonna do is twist off a bubble approximately the same length as this one here. So that's about five centimeters or two inches. I'm gonna twist the small one inch bubble there and then match the size of this bubble here. Locking it in at the center point of the wings. And finally, repeating that one more time, matching the length. And getting that final bit there. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead to remove that excess and tie it off and then be left with that wing shape. On occasions when I do this design, by serendipity, I have just enough tail to wrap into the end and I don't have to remove any here, but uh, do what you gotta do. And, oh, been a while. Tight that knot, all right. positioning now looks a little something like this. We're going to go ahead now to work on the lower part of the wing. Now something that I talked about before was uh, along the lines of making the design your own. If you wanted to stop at this point and then add the butterfly body that's really sweet and cute isn't it? So I think um, it's something that you'll come to want to maybe experiment with as you try out this design. But uh, moving into the second balloon, I've got the 160 lilac. I'm just inflating a good length there. There's about uh, 20 centimeters or so uninflated, but we're not going to use a whole lot, but we're gonna be savvy with it, and we are going to uh, break it as we go along and use it in two different parts of the butterfly. I'm gonna start off with a small loop, and this one's approximately four fingers long for me. And taking that knot, throw it through again to help lock it in. Going over to one of your bottom butterfly wings, in the same movement here, what I like to do is pinch twist the uh, bubble that's on the pink and incorporate the purple in at the same time. Get it nice and close for you. So putting them side by side. And I'm going to insert that bubble just to the inside there. Okay, now, by now you're possibly sick of those tiny, perfect, imperfect bubbles. <laughs> but um, sorry about this, we're gonna do a few more. One and two. So these two are both fairly even in size and they're about the same width as the balloon itself. I'm going to go ahead and do a third one and pinch twist it. This pinch twist I'm going to introduce here at the pink balloon. Place again for you. <laughs> something there happened which unfortunately can occur when you're doing this design just grin and bear it or make sure you add a few extra twists as you go along <laughs> it's the luck of the draw I think with it uh, sometimes it might untwist a bit as I'm doing it and other times it doesn't if you're going to be creating a butterfly design for a child you think might be flapping it around a bit too much maybe reconsider using this design or um, use less bubbles, perhaps. What I'm doing here is removing that excess, tie off, almost always tie off because I hate the idea of it going down because I wasn't efficient enough with my wrapping. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna tie this one off. 
I'm going to repeat the process from before. So, creating a bubble, approximately four fingers long. Getting that knot, locking it through. I'm going to pinch twist the pink here as I introduce the purple. And place that just inside. Now, I'm going to repeat the same bubble sequence that I did on this side. You could, if you're tired of those dang small bubbles, go ahead to uh, not have bubbles. So it's just one um, bubble that will then end in a pinch twist. But for symmetry's sake, we're going to make the two bubbles happen. Pinch twist the third here. And bring that in there. Ooh, and remove that excess. Tie off. And I'm going to tie that just in case. It comes in handy shortly. Now, you could go ahead to use this off piece to do the body of the butterfly. And actually, no, no, I said I'm going to use a 260. I'm going to use a 260, but a 160, especially this one, would also do the trick at this time. Now, you might notice there's one other movement or twist that I haven't done here, and that is in the tippy top of the butterfly wings. Now, what I'm going to do here, if you watch closely, I'm going to create a twist in this bubble here. And twist. Now that balloon friction is nice and uh, firm there and it should uh, prevent it from unraveling. I'm going to go ahead and re repeat it on the other side. So the reason why we twist that now as opposed to having six bubbles in this chain, I find that it makes a nice and firm friction point here to allow that part of the design feature to actually stay put. See, it's not really going anywhere. Again, if you've got a child who you think might destroy your lovely bubbles very quickly, you might like to skip that skip because you did see that there's still a beautiful shape to the wings. But I love the dynamic shapes that we're seeing here. With the base part of the wings here, you can even twist it to go to the side. And that looks quite lovely too. So it's up to you. Again, you can make this design your own. Put it, put your spin on it in the way that you love. Now, going to the next part. So for the butterfly, you may have noticed uh, first of all that it was a wand. So that is exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use a beautiful Chrome 260. As I inflate it, I'm going to leave approximately uh, five centimeters uninflated. Tying it at one end, and I'm going to commence with two pinch twists. To do it, I'm going to do two bubbles, lock them in, and then pinch twist it. I'm going to give it a bit of a squish, twisting off a bubble approximately four fingers in length, followed by two more bubbles that I'm going to pinch twist. One is slightly smaller than the other. So one's about an inch, the other's uh, just over an inch. Okay. Now we're going to introduce the uh, 160 butterfly that we did before. Now with this bit, ease the gold or the body balloon over the top. Basically we want to twist off a bubble here the same size as this um, front one that we did, and then twist it into the pinch twist below. Okay. 
P.S. I like the wings that way. <laughs> right, so I'm going to go ahead to create the twist in the handle. So when I do this, sorry, <laughs> I am making this, the end part of the balloon, just slightly lower than this part. So I'm going to give it a bit of a squish in a moment at this end, help make it more narrow. And that's going to push that part up a little bit. So to try and avoid, uh, or to try and hope for an equal spiral going up, I just find that helps. So starting with that a bit smaller, so giving it a squish and the air is going to go up. So I'm going to go ahead to twist those two. Now when you get to the top, if you've got a little bit of towel there, great. Um, twist it into the pinch twist there. If not, just t uh, create a small bubble right in the end and put it in with those there and twist. Okay. So this is what we're looking at. And finally, our, our next 260 is going to be for the antenna. Here, this uh, lovely lime green. What I like to do is tie it approximately in half. I'm going to remove this end here so I can insert air into both ends. So starting at this side, I'm going to firmly pinch about an inch away from the end to help ensure the air only gets into a small part of that balloon. So we've got about five centimeters or two uh, and, or an inch, sorry, just under five centimeters or two inches there. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a apple twist, like I said, an apple twist to do the top of the antenna and I'm going to repeat that and I'll talk about it more slowly but first of all I'm going to inflate that other side. Tying it off, taking my finger, inserting that knot into the uninflated part of the 260, pinching it off, and adjusting like so. Now sometimes I get to this point and I find that they are lopsided. <laughs> yes, yes, it happens to me a lot, okay? <laughs> but that's okay, I think it, help add to, it helps to add to the charm of the butterfly. But we are now going to introduce it into the head. I like to hold it on one side, pull it firmly underneath, and over to the other side. Not too much twisting in this area as it's already quite, um, what's the word, uh, quite tight. So that just holds it in quite nicely. So at this point, my pink pinch is coming a bit undone. We have something that looks like this. Okay, so now I'm doing the eyes. I'm gonna do ovals again, but this time, they are more upright. A little sideways V there. Also for the other side. And a sweet little smile spanning cheek to cheek. Normally like to give it eyebrows too. And you can go ahead to give it a nose, but hey, I'm not gonna go crazy. <laughs> and just like to create a sweet little heart shape for the shine of the eyes. <laughs> now, my uh, time is going to run out on my SD card, so I apologize, and I'll see you for the next video for the other trick. Take care, goodbye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, so after a quick costume change, I'm now ready to show you that one last neat trick that I talked about at the beginning of the video. Now, in reality, it's actually a couple of days later and I'm only just getting the chance to film this part because my memory card happened to run out of space. So if the ending felt a bit rushed, I do apologize. But what I might say in uh, relation to the tutorial with this monarch inspired butterfly that I've completed is make sure that when you are doing the final positioning, oh, one of my hair's been there, sorry. This, part, this balloon here is nestled in just between the 260 bubble, two 160 bubbles that are beneath it there. And here with the bottom part of the butterfly, you can play around with positioning. So I talked about making the design your own. So that's one of those little uh, twists you can do to really uh, make the design one that you enjoy doing. And here at the top of the butterfly, I've only twisted together two of the bubbles. <laughs> so that again can give it a different look. And when you're using the black 160, I managed to actually use one to get those three different areas. And then I've got a 260 that I've used to create the antenna on top with the apple twist. <laughs> Anyhow, so enough about the butterfly. What is that neat thing I wanted to show you? Well, why should bow and arrows be the only tactile kind of toy that we could give to the children? And uh, when I say tactile, I probably should say projectile, <laughs> because we all know how much fun boys and girls have running around shooting balloon arrows at each other. So I had a thought, why or how can I uh, take that balloon in motion idea one step further? And I came up with this. <laughs> So it is basically just a take on a bow and arrow. In fact, it'd probably shoot a pretty mean arrow too. But in this case, it's intended to shoot butterflies. And if you check out my Instagram uh, feed, which is um, instagram.com a rainbow of balloons, you will be able to see uh, the same principle in action except with a, a fairy. I nearly said princess. I'm sure princesses can fly. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to show you how to do this in a minute, but first, I would grasp my butterfly from below. Oh, and here in the body, I did one little twist there just to give it a bit of um, bit of a decent space for the butterfly to be pulled down upon. If it's just the smooth round balloon, it doesn't get much purchase and it gets a bit slippery. So I'd recommend a twist or even some pin twist in that area just to help with this step. Here I am gripping the butterfly beneath. Pull it down and <laughs> kind of neat, hey? Now, let me show you how I put this one together. So that's a bit of a bonus. It's done completely with 260 balloons and you're going to need four of them. I've got some of the beautiful new pastel, uh, matte pastel range from Metallic. It looks gorgeous. And uh, the Qualitex Green. I'm going ahead to inflate it and just letting a little bit of air out at the end. We've got approximately an inch or so there to play with. I'm going to tie that off. And do a pinch twist. Now we're going to give the balloon a bit of a squeeze to soften it a bit. And we're going to find out where the approximate halfway point is. Between this. Now we're going to twist at that halfway point. Now I'm going to create a pinch twist here by squeezing these two in twisting it around several times and when we get to this point I'm going to pull them apart and twist them in opposite direction. Okay and then I'm going to go ahead to spiral these two balloons together and I'm just going to give it a bit of a squish here because I want to have 
approximately a one inch bubble that's going to finish in the top here but we'll twist that in when we get to it. So super noisy I'm sorry <laughs> but when I get to this point I'm going to basically do a twist that incorporates these two ends together like so now next I'm going to make a couple of flowers now if you are happy to use a singular color for the flowers I'm going to use two you might get away with getting the two flowers out of one balloon so it's a good way to be a bit more economical but I love the chance to bring a lot of colour into my designs and this is a great way to do that. I'm inflating this 260 now approximately halfway but we're not going to use all of it. But what we are going to do is do four petals. As a bit of a measuring tool I like to get the balloon uh, folded over and basically pinch in like this and twist. So you can see approximately the size of the bubble that I'm creating here. So it's about three fingers, maybe four. Pinch in with that knot, feed it through. So it's um, just by feel, I know how much balloon I want to grab. I'll give it a bit of a squish. do the four petals. Now uh, I'm going to remove the excess and as I mentioned you could possibly use this. It depends on how big you've gone with your petals. In this case I don't need it. Get rid of that. I love to tie things off always. And I've got my flower here. I'm going to go ahead to repeat that process now with the pink 260. Okay, so, so far we've got oh, two flowers and our bow part of the uh, contraption. <laughs> so our final thing to do is take the 260 that I'm going to create the tension line with or the bow line. Now use whatever way you find works best to uh, get, have one end of the one end of your 260 have a little bit of bubble and then your opposite end. What I typically like to do when I'm making bow and arrows or this design is to inflate this 260 all the way, which I'm about to do, and then um, work with a, uh, the deflation of it to get the balloon to the other side. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so just being careful not to let the air out of this end. <laughs> we'll twist off the bubble I need. Pop it in. Just make sure it's basically locked in place so no air will escape before you let the air escape. <laughs> When you get towards the end, try not to let that air out. I'll tell you what, I accidentally have on occasion, so that is a thing. Oh, well, luckily it's not so bad to fix with the agenda. <laughs> so here, I'll take that end and I'm just going to feed it in the top. You can do this as well, just to ensure it's locked in and not going anywhere. Just like 
to take that nozzle. <laughs> Get it in under there. So we have a nice round top on either end. Now I'm going to attach it into our 260 spiral. And I'm going to do this by pulling on, pulling on the back of this 260, feeding it through the pinch twist. Wrap around once. We don't want to lose much length of this, so try to be economical with your wraps. You don't need to, man. You just want to make sure though it's not going to come out. And then we just need to work on the positioning. And when I say that, <laughs> it's your four pedals. Just want them to be sitting like so. Just like so there. Ooh. Didn't pop, just sounded like it. Okay, now you'll find that, just comparing the two, this line is a lot more torn than this line. And if you uh, are not sure why, it's because I inflated that 260 all the way. But with this one, I used a different method, which involved a lot of <laughs> squishing the air to the opposite end of the balloon. So just starting with a small bubble, splitting it in two and squishing all the air to the other side. So that has made a difference in the length of it. So you may find that you enjoy the extra length, up to you. The butterfly. So positioning her on top. Pulling down and ooh. <laughs> what I do find, the more taunt and upright this, the better the butterfly flies. But it's completely up to you and what method you find might work best for you. Anyhow, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a bit of a long one, but I enjoyed putting these ideas together for you. Now, if you are keen, like I said, uh, check out my Facebook, uh, check out Instagram, and you can see a video of the Flying Fairy. And you know what? It's actually on my Facebook page too, which is facebook.com, a balloon rainbow. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for me. So until next time, have a great day. Bye.